23 years old and, uh, and a, a top music programmer for radio stations. How does MTV happen from there? Well, I, I actually was. NBC sent me to New York from Chicago. I was one of a group of guys that were Herb's boys. Herb Schlosser was the president of the company, and there was some young talent in the company that he sort of adopted. I was one of them. Dick Ebersol was one. Lorne Michaels was one. Um, and one of the things he told me was, he said, look, Bob, I want you to get experience with TV because I'm going to take from radio to TV programming. And uh, he gave me a TV show after Saturday Night Live on the NBC O&O's and said, it was basically do whatever you want to do. Um, and so I took videos, music videos, played a video, did some music news, uh, did stuff about music, sort of like a music news segment in the early days of MTV, and got a little experience with that. Were there, were there many music videos even like available? At they the time? were mostly British, but there were some American ones. Right. What happened was in the in America, radio breaks music, but in Europe in those days you broke music off TV stations because there were not many music radio stations, and so the artists would produce these music videos to send to the TV stations all around Europe, so they didn't have to travel so much to make the appearances, and uh, so that was sort of the the beginning of me thinking about. And then Herb got kicked upstairs at NBC. They brought in Fred Silverman to run NBC. And I go, oh, my, my mentor's not there. So I began looking around. And, and uh, Warner sold half of their cable company to American Express. They wanted a head of programming. And they came to talk to me because I was this kid. And they thought cable networks were going to be like radio stations, very narrow cast as opposed to these broad you know, networks like ABC, NBC, CBS. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I got hired, and I first did a service called the Movie Channel, which was 24 hours a day, all movies, at a time when all the services were just on in prime time, uh, and they weren't all movies. So the first sort of specialty channel, and, and it did okay. And they said, okay, now we're ready for the next network. And so I pitched that, and I had a boss who loved music, just wanted to do music on TV more than anything else, uh, but was really sort of a sales guy and really no programming. And I had done... MTV, so we two conspired and said, oh, I want to do music, and he said, great, I'll support you on that, and, and let's do it. So I put together a plan to basically be a video radio station, and sort of internally we say, we're going to do to, to FM what FM did to AM, because AM sort of amped it up with a better fidelity, now we're going to add the visual element to it. And that was the concept, and it was a tough road to get the board of directors to say yes. The board of Warner MX would not say yes. We had to go to Steve Ross, who... What, 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 was, their, what was their biggest objection? Oh, it's just too weird. I mean, it's crazy. Well, but first of all, no advertiser-supported cable network had ever succeeded. So there's a question about whether that model even worked. And the second thing was whether this rock and roll stuff would work. So we got a meeting with Steve Ross, who ran Warner Communications, and Jim Robinson, ran American Express, and, and his deputy, the president, was Lou Gershner, who went on the fame at uh, IBM. And uh, they sat in a meeting. And about three quarters of the way through the meeting, Jim Robinson looked at Steve Ross and said, I'm in for my half. How about you, Steve? Mm -hmm. And that's the way we began. <laughs>